had just crossed into Colorado from New Mexico on the 491, and this shit is very pretty. New Mexico is driving me insane because the roads are terrible, just fucking god awful, like horrid. Um, bouncing me all over the place and crazy fucking heavy wind and I've only got 10,000 in the box so I was slowed down for like ever um almost hit a dog like 20 miles back <laughs> I was rolling through a town and I was was coming up onto a red light it had been red for a while so it had just turned green I slowed down to like maybe 15 miles an hour and it turned green and this tiny little wiener dog fucking trots out into the road and acts like he's going to cross the road. So I don't like slam on my brakes. I slow down and throw my flashes on. And then he fucking turns around and just walks right back in front of my fucking truck. So like I honk at him, you know, A, to try and scare him back onto the fucking sidewalk and B, to let the truck that was crawling up my ass know that something's going on because people don't pay attention to flashers. Um, so I just, I honked the air horn real quick and, uh, just to alert <laughs> the surrounding area. Hey, something's going on <laughs> right in front of me. Um, but yeah, so he trotted back up onto the sidewalk and, um, so I crept through the intersection and then the truck behind me followed me. And I think the car behind him pulled over onto the shoulder. I'm hoping that they fucking... We're going to go try and wrangle the damn dog. He had, like, a collar and everything. Like, he's totally somebody's animal. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. I'm not going to hit a tiny little dog today. Like, thank God I was already slowing down for the fucking light because it was red. If it had been green and he ran out in front of me, I don't know if I would have been able to stop in time, even as light as I am. So, um, thankfully, I didn't hit the damn dog. Otherwise, I don't know. I would be fucking devastated. I don't think I could fucking handle that. Especially somebody's pet. Like, hitting a stray would be bad enough, but killing somebody's pet? That's horrible. That's so horrible. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's recovering from that for a minute. Um, but yeah, so Colorado, I'm guessing I'm in southwestern Colorado. Um, that's my guess, is that it's the southwestern corner. But yeah, very, very pretty landscape. Kind of cold, kind of breezy, but so far it's not too bad other than the wind. <sighs> I'm racing the clock to get to my delivery on time. they gave me this freaking run and it was already going to be tight, it wouldn't have been so bad if I had picked it up right at like the beginning of my day, but I picked it up toward the end of my day because I was already in the middle of something else. So, I got kind of screwed. But, I'm going to do my best to get there and, um, and then I get a 34 because I'm fresh out of fucking hours. I've blasted through 70 hours in the last six days. So, I won't get any hours back until Monday morning anyway, but if I take a fucking 34, I'll get a fresh clock on Monday morning, so. Where was the wording for that shit? No fucking signage at all saying, hey, speed limit change, or I missed it, one or the other. It's very possible. <laughs>
I think the only other equivalent is the military. Because, oh my God, they inflate themselves like none other. And they fucking tell you it's going to be the best thing in the world. And that they're going to do all this fucking shit for you. And then, like, half the people I've talked to that have been in any of the branches of the military, they're like, yeah, half of that, they, they actually tried. But the other half, they're just like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. I know we told you we were going to do that, but we're not going to do that. Um, you know, like, tuition rate person and all that kind of fucking shit where they're gonna station you like sometimes they'll make they'll make outlandish promises and then they're just like uh you didn't read the fine print it says if we feel like it if we're capable blah blah blah, blah. um <laughs> but yeah so in truck driving school they fucking tell you up and down oh you're a paid tourist you get to see the country like yeah, you get to see the country and you get to see the signs for all the things that you'd like to go and stop and do. But most of those, like I want to say 95% of sightseeing things do not have truck accessibility at all, let alone truck parking. Like you can't literally even get your truck in there without causing some mayhem. So... Yeah, paid tourist, my fucking ass. I get to see landscapes. That's kind of cool. I get to experience all sorts of weather. Can be cool. Um, but as far as tourists and sightseeing, no. No, 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 no. Not even fucking close. All I do is fucking drive all goddamn day, every day. Um, and occasionally, I get to see something cool. Uh, one of them that comes to mind is... Um, not the Hoover Dam. I missed the Hoover Dam. But the dam that's in Page, Arizona. I forget the highway number. But it goes into Page, Arizona. There's a dam right there. There's a rest area. But you can't get a truck into the rest area. No trucks allowed. It's too fucking skinny. Long RVs are okay. But a truck is too big. But... <laughs> If you're going into Page from the north, you come down this steep ass fucking hill that curves and right at the bottom of that, there's a fucking pull off. Uh, It's not very big and if you don't know it's there, you're gonna miss it. But there's a pull off right there that's big enough for like maybe three trucks. Um, So I've stopped there before and walked across this big ass fucking dam bridge, which is incredible. Like, the view is incredible. I know I've posted pictures of it. Um, I don't think I've gotten any video. I haven't gone over there in a while. But it's pretty fucking awesome. It's really fucking high up. But that's one of the few, like, sightseeing spots that I can think of at the moment that I've actually been able to stop at because... I mean, there wasn't even truck parking there, but there was the ability to park a truck. Big difference, but it still works. So, but yeah, so paid tourist is a fucking joke. Anybody who's interested in this career, um, yeah, they, they are going to fucking, most of them say that to you. Like, oh, you'll be a paid tourist, get to see the country, all this fucking shit, but it's really, yo, know, are you going to pass me? Um, but they're usually, when I get a 34, 
it almost never fails that I'm in the middle of bumfuck nowhere and like there's a there's nothing around or b if there is anything around it's like 30 miles away and there's no way to get the truck there you know even if I drop trailer um and either there isn't car ride service or it's ridiculously expensive like when I was up in Seattle, I was only 30 miles away, not even 30 or roughly 30, 30 miles away from one of my friends and a lift to her place from where I was parked was going to be like $80 one way. <laughs> so like I was that close to her and I still couldn't even fucking see her because you know, I couldn't get the truck up to where she was because it was, you know, very city scape kind of situation and there was nowhere that was the usual safe bet for parking. So she tried to wrangle a car, but then the car was having mechanical issues. So it was just, it was a big ordeal and long story short, you know, I didn't get to hang out with her, which happens every fucking time I'm anywhere near any of my friends. It never fails that, like, I just can't hang out with them because I'm too far away, even when I'm close. Or if I'm passing directly by their fucking house, I'm on a tight run and I can't stop. Like, not even for 10 minutes. So, it just, it just sucks. It's ridiculous. Sorry, bro, on a bicycle. I'm trying to slow down. What's up, Kree? Um... But yeah, so paid tourist, this is what they mean. You get to see landscapes. 